you. So welcome, fellow Toastmasters, and we've got so many guests. We're so happy to see you today. This meeting on, on, of online presenters is beginning right now. Guests, please note that in order to join our club, you must be either a current or former active member of Toastmasters International and have completed at least six official speeches. If you have rel rel relevant <laughs> presentation experience, you may apply for membership after demonstrating your abilities with a two to three minute speech delivered during the club meeting. Our requests for membership are subject to approval by the members of our club. If you have not already done so, please change your panel to ensure that it shows your name and any role that you're playing tonight. If you are a guest, it would be great if you could put the word guest in front of your name. Just click on your panel and click rename in order to do so. We have members and guests from many countries throughout the world. And as a professional organization, we ask that you be aware of your language and your word usage so that we don't offend anybody or be insensitive. Please note that we are recording the meeting and your video and audio may contribute to the club marketing purposes. Also, please mute your microphone when you are not speaking. Now, please join me in welcoming to the Toastmaster stage, our club president, DTM, Lou Brown. Thank you very much, Madam Sergeant at Arms. Welcome everyone. Welcome especially to those who are just with us for their first time in 2022. Nice to see you and great way to kick off the year with a wonderful Toastmasters meeting. Thank you to all of our guests for joining us this evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you may be. This is a global club. So we have folks joining us from all different parts of the world and some at even two, three and 4 a.m. in the morning. That's how excited folks are about online presenters. We will, we will certainly hear back from you, our guests, at the end of the meeting. We'd love to hear how you felt about our meeting. Uh, we do have a very structured meeting with an agenda, and we'd love to stick to a timetable, so we are going to hop right into things. However, for those of you who were here earlier and heard Nick say something about a special little change that we're doing, we are indeed making a change to our meeting structure. We love shaking things up here at Online Presenters, providing our members with some fresh, exciting elements to our program. And what we have decided to do is to have something called a <clears throat> Skillshare five-minute moment, something in line with that. We haven't come up with a very formal name, but what it is, is a very short, roughly five-minute speech by someone who would love to share an idea, a, some leadership experience, software skill, tech tip, whatever the case may be. It's all about someone who would like to share an idea or a skill or a piece of knowledge that they have in a relatively short amount of time. It is not a prepared speech, so there will not be a formal evaluation. However, after the meeting, we will ask folks, attendees, of course, for some informal feedback or rather some voluntary feedback so that we can still share that with our speaker. It is all about providing that person with an opportunity to do some additional practicing within our club for those skills that are in high demand, namely online presentation skills. Our very first speaker who will do such a presentation is our immediate past president, Nick Lacani. And to let everyone know, before we get to the other segments, I need to say this. We're still kind of, I guess I'll say, experimenting with this whole thing. So bear with me and everyone as we kind of stumble through this our first time. But I will be timer. This is for Nick's benefit so that he knows he's still being timed. It's a five-minute moment. But I am going to show a green light at four minutes, yellow light at four and a half, and then red at five so that he knows he still has some time to wrap it up. But then after Nick's speech, we will go over to the Toastmasters to conduct the traditional portion of the program. Okay, as I mentioned, we're still kind of getting all our ducks in a row, but I think that was a pretty good explanation of it for this first time. 
For those of you who know Nick, you know that he loves trying new and different things. Now, Nick is going to demonstrate the benefits of using an alternative to Microsoft PowerPoint to make your point with impact on screen while remaining connected with the audience. Now, Nick used the word whilst, not while. Us Americans, I guess, say while. The UK, they say whilst. He will do so with a speech titled, I'll never use PowerPoint in inline meetings again. Please give a warm welcome to our very wonderful Nick Lacani. Thank you very much, Mr. President. It's great to break new ground, isn't it? To have change. Well, not only am I a member and immediate past president of this club, I'm also president of a club called Digital Communicators, which meets on a Monday, 6 p.m. UK time. Now, why is that important? Well, that's not important, that's just a free plug because I'm using the software that Digital Communicators bought for club members, something called Prezi. Now, after buying the, li uh, uh, we bought the license and what has happened is that over the last six months, at least half of the club have used this software for at least one hour, all right? Now, hands up right now, I'm gonna take a poll right now. Hands up those of you who will use Prezi software if online presenters buys it for at least one hour in the next six months. I wanna see a few hands, let's have a look. Okay, can somebody count them up for me? One, two, three, four, five, six, maybe. Okay, thank you. Now, I'll never use PowerPoint again at online meetings such as Toastmaster clubs, so Toastmaster meetings. And even when I do, I'll reuse PowerPoint in the right way. Well, let me tell you about Prezi. Prezi is the new kid on a block. It's smooth, it's cool, you know, it's fun. Prezi in slang over here in Britain, we, we actually have Prezi as slang for present, or in this case, present. This tool will help you present your message without taking away from your message. In one hour last week, I learned how to do something like this, where I said, do you remember? Forget perfect, start messy. And hashtag just hit record. Also, I pre-recorded a video, which I shared with you. And it's easy to play on here. Now, one of the keys about this is that you can show pictures, text, videos as part of your screen or as all of your screen, just like this. You see what I mean? Whole or part. We can go backwards, we can go forwards, just like a normal little slideshow, but it doesn't take away from me because ultimately, if you wanted to my, have my slideshow, I could just email it to you. That's the point. Accentuate your message, actually uh, have a, a slideshow which is congruent with your message, but don't overpower your message. Now, in Toastmaster clubs, if I was timer today, I would use something like this. Look, green, amber, and red. If somebody goes over 30 seconds after the red light, well, we can have a bit of fun, can't we? Now, what I want you to do is to inspire you or to recommend to you, suggest to you, force you, to go and try this tool for just one hour, see what you can achieve. You do it, uh, one of the things about Prezi is that it's got three elements and this is what they are. Prezi design. What Prezi design is, is something akin to Canva. Um, friends of mine who have used it for quite a long time say it's not as good as Canva, Canva but it comes with the product when you buy the pro version. It's great, uh, or even the basic version. Now, Prezi Present is like PowerPoint, but it's a lot more flexible, but in some ways probably, you know, 
PowerPoint is works better in some respects. It's all give and take. It depends on what tool you need for the job, right? So that's the presentation software and the video software is Prezi Present. Now I've got this sitting on my computer where I can actually save this uh, particular slideshow and then play it at any given time. All you need to do is go to prezi.com, go hit the top right hand corner to go start the trial, have a look at it. And after 14 days, I want you to go and buy it. Well, I tell you what, I want the club to go and buy it because it's not that difficult, it's not that expensive, and we have the, the actual resources at hand. Why not? Now, I want to raise of hands. How many of you are going to try it if the club buys it for one hour in the next six months? Okay. As far as I'm concerned, there's lots more hands there. Now, you know what to do. Back to you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Nick. Appreciated that. Very close to five and a half. I thought I would have to start maybe filing my own nail since I don't have a kitty photo to show. Excellent job. Thank you so much. I am very excited to start using this program, check it out, learn it, and see what it can do for me. I am a, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I am, I guess in some ways, a PowerPoint junkie, but no, I, I should certainly uh, be less addicted to it, shouldn't I? So I need to go on some, uh, I guess, anti-addiction journey here. Anyway. With that said, we are not going to start the formal portion of our program. I am going to turn things over to our Toastmaster of the day, our Vice President of Education, Dr. Andrew Byrne. Thank you very much, Lou. I appreciate you letting me know that is my turn on the stage. For those of you who have not pulled down the agenda yet, the theme is Martin Luther King Day, which is something we practice in the United States. And the word of the day is freedom or justice. It gives you a choice of whichever one that you want to use. And I look forward to having everybody invoke those words and practice those words as well. Uh, in our new format, we are not introducing and spending time identifying each of the roles and in that way we have created some time for more table topics or other items that we want to introduce we've already had our first speaker nick lacani and our second speaker is trisha smith she's going her title is go green it's easy to be green from visionary communications level four Building skills, communicate change. Go ahead, Tricia. Don't be comfort driven, be cause driven. <clears throat> Do you have a cause you believe in? A purpose, a meaning, a lifestyle you wanna share with others that makes a difference in the world, your life, your family? What is a cause? A cause is a person or a thing that makes a difference or a change, a phenomena, an event. Let me ask you a few questions to think about while you listen. What is your cause? How do you support your cause? How does it make a difference in your life or the life of other people? Greetings, fellow Toastmasters, friends and guests. I'm Tricia Smith. I'm gonna talk about change. I wanna convince you to make a change. What kind of a change? An environmental change in your lifestyle. Go green, eco living. Do you live that way? I do. I wanna be the example. I wanna talk about healthy living, how it benefits you, how it's gonna benefit your family and others and how it is easy to do. I'm gonna show you some examples. It's healthy, it's non-toxic, it's safe. It does no harm to live that way makes a difference in the world, in the environment. We have things happening all around us today. Climate change is real. Let me show you some natural examples that you can purchase in the store. I have a confession. These examples are made from plastic. I would like to say, don't use plastic, especially the water bottles. Water bottles, and if you have babies or grandchildren, 
don't use those disposable diapers. They take up the biggest amount of land space. Here are some examples, and unfortunately, they are plastic, most of them. Cleaning products and personal care products. We're all about personal care these days, right? DIY during COVID shutdown. Lemon juice is a great source for cleaning. It's also something that's edible. So if you put a little lemon, lemon juice in your water, it detoxifies your body. It helps with your digestion. It's a good cleaner, just a little sticky, and it's concentrated. How about some good old white vinegar? Concentrated, maybe doesn't smell so good, but it is very effective. It will clean any appliance, surface, floor. It's a good deodorizer. If you have some hydrogen peroxide and you mix it with some baking soda and a little essential oils like mint, don't swallow it like toothpaste, but you can use it like toothpaste. The hydrogen peroxide is a good antiseptic for your skin. It also cleans surfaces, many uses, good for sore throats with salt water. Baking soda is a good deodorizer in the refrigerator. It's good for the oven cleaner. It, it, it cleans surfaces very effectively. Olive oil, if you love to cook, you're familiar with this in the kitchen as well. It's good for your skin. It's a natural antiseptic. It's edible. You can use it for cooking. You can use it as a to polish your furniture. How about some soap? Like castle soap, bar or liquid. You can use it for shampoo or all body. It's natural, organic. And again, I'm going to say the water bottle. You can buy a filtered water bottle that you just put water in and it filters out all of the harmful anything you don't need to be drinking. Or a regular bottle that can be refillable is better than the disposable water bottles. If you go to the store, I recommend if you buy over the counter, you don't want ammonia or bleach products, right? That's where our, our vinegar comes in for cleaning windows and mirrors and surfaces. But palm olive is a great soap, a detergent for clothes or laundry or dishes and it's safe on your hands. So it's very good for your skin as well. They used to show it and advertise it. Soaking your hands in palm olive dish soap. For personal care products, this is not cleaning. This is for your skin. Witch hazel is excellent and it's good for varicose veins or things like that. My grandma used to use this. Uh, vitamin E, great for your skin. How about some other things you can do around your house, like using LED lights? They last a lot longer than the traditional fluorescent bulbs. If you garden or compost, I don't throw food in my garbage. I throw it out for the animals or liquid food waste I put in the toilet. It's good for your septic tank. There's many things that you can do around your house. Reduce, 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 reuse, recycle, of course, is always a good practice. So again, green living is healthy, non-toxic, safe, doesn't cause harm, doesn't pollute. So if you have green living practices, you are breathing better, easier. You're more effective and productive at work and at home. How is that? Because you're not polluting your air or your water or your soil. Water, in fact, do you conserve water? When you brush your teeth or wash your face or take a shower, how long do you let that water run? Put a brick in your tank or get energy efficient appliances to save water and energy. Save on your bills. It's more economical, saves money. Do you do, your on, do, you do bills online? Do you have e-bills or statements? That's a good way, right? Reduce paper. I'll bet you can come up with some ways too, right? If you put it in the chat or shared, please do so, so we can have some good tips going. Again, the benefits of eco living, I really believe strongly in it. I have a, a huge passion for it. Uh, it's evident in our lives today around the world. There's an environmental climate crisis. We see natural disasters. I can't get into that, but it's real. Watch the news. Eco living is something we can all do to take responsibility and accountability, make it a better world, live healthier, happier lives, benefit yourself, others, your children, the world, every living thing, and for generations to come. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Trisha. Please take the opportunity to send little note, love notes to Trisha and let her know how much you appreciate her speech. Our next speaker is Angela Heath. And let me give you a little intro. Angela Heath is speaking from Presentation Mastery Level 3 using presentation software. Angela is sharing a summary she is using for a presentation for a client. She's using PowerPoint with a tool called ManyCam. And I know that Jim Barber is using ManyCam and several others may be as well. So take it away, Angela. My fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, thank you so much for allowing me to share a sneak peek at this research that we did called Examining Freelancing. We're comparing 2015 results to 2021. And I'm gonna share with you three surprise findings. Now, you know that we surveyed a little over 2,000 people and good news, 60% were women. Typically, we don't have many women participating. We have broad ethnic diversity, which is great considering it's Martin Luther King's birthday. So I'm happy to share that. But let's get to these three surprises. The first surprise is part-time hustle less appealing. Interestingly, in 2015, when we looked at this, the vast majority of our sample was interested in a part-time gig hustle, part-time consulting. Very few were interested in full-time and that now has changed. But it's not all bad news. In fact, it's very good news. Because what it means is that now the opportunities for full-time freelancing are growing. The interest went from 30% up to 45%. Some of this can be explained through the pandemic, the great resignation. We know that over 4 million people voluntarily have left their jobs. They got a taste of freedom and they decided, I don't want to go back there, at least not in the employee capacity. Freelancing is starting to look very good to quite a few people. Surprise number two, women said yes. In 2015, 60% of the women said yes. 72% said so in 2021. Now, this is really important because it means that perhaps we need to make sure we're recruiting more women to participate in our program. Typically, we have not seen this many women who were interested. When we compared women to men, however, we found out that one of the reasons the women were interested is that they actually had been laid off more often during the pandemic. But here's the good news. Women said, yes, it doesn't matter if they're young or old. It doesn't matter what kind of occupation they are participating in. And I like to think of it as women have courage. They're saying, I have skills, I have talents that I can offer in the marketplace that perhaps some years ago, I was not comfortable doing. The third surprise, and I love it, the hobby culture. 45% of the people responding to the survey said they have a hobby that they believe they can use for freelancing. And it's true. If you look at the statistics, more and more people are exploring how they can use their hobbies to earn some additional income. Now, here's the good thing. Of those who said, I've got a hobby, I think may be able to help someone in the marketplace, 
34% said that they're actually ready right now to monetize. That's good news for our program. So in conclusion, we know that more people are interested in full-time freelancing. It has implications for how we structure what we teach and the approach that we take. We want to make sure that what we're teaching them will actually help them scale their businesses. We know that more women are interested in freelancing, and that's great news. I recommend that we do a focus group, or maybe three, talking to women especially to find out what are the areas that they're interested in. And number three non-traditional options. In the past, most of our training has been around knowledge workers, people who have skills that they've learned in college, they got certifications for, and we never even thought about hobbies as an option. So with that, I'd like to say I'm excited. These results suggest to us that we are on the right path. We've already started to change the training. And as we analyze the results even more, we will make more necessary training because we want to make sure that what we are delivering to these attendees is really going to be beneficial to them so that they can earn not only more income, but have more impact in the marketplace. This is Angela Heath. Thank you. I'll take questions. Back to you. Thank you very much, Angela. Very inspiring speech. And maybe during some time, either after the party or before, we can talk about transferable skills and skills that you would like to monetize, and perhaps we can help you as a club do that. The next portion of our meeting, if you're going and following our agenda, is table topics. And for this section, I'd like to call up Evelyn Young, or if I mispronounced your name, I'm sorry, but Evelyn Young, you're up, table topics. That's impro impromptu speaking. And Lou, as timer, can you tell people what the timing parameters are for table topics? Certainly, Mr. Toastmaster, timing for table topics is one to two minutes. I'll flash the green screen at one minute, yellow screen at one and a half, red at two minutes, at which point folks will have 30 seconds to wrap things up. I would like to let you know, Mr. Toastmaster, that both of our original spe our prepared speeches, speakers qualified, I put their times in the chat, Trisha at 555, Angela at 607. Folks, feel free to send your vote for best speaker, which there's, <laughs> throw Nick in the pot as well. We uh, really haven't tweaked that part, whether or not he's eligible for best speaker, but you know what, in the spirit of camaraderie, I say, yes, let's do it. So feel free to vote for best speaker, because he did qualify, by the way, five minutes and 27 seconds. So with that said, Vote for your best speaker, Nick, Trisha, or Angela. Send your vote to our vote counter. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Nick, so, we're, uh, so Lou, we're not using the automated vote counting tool from the club? I do not know. Uh, uh, I'll yes, leave that up I'll to be, the vote counter. I'll be posting the link in the chat. Here it comes. OK. While we're doing this, please take the opportunity to bring on Table Topics Master, Toastmaster Young. Go ahead. So our, the topic of our meeting today is freedom or justice. When I heard about this topic, it suddenly dawned on me, why can't we have both freedom and justice? Why do we have to choose between freedom or justice. Martin today, today is a Martin Luther King day. Martin Luther King fights, fought for both freedom and justice. And so probably 
we can also fight for both of them or have both of them, have both of, both of them go hand in hand. What do you think, Andrew? <laughs> Speaking of Martin Luther King, it suddenly dawns on me, if you were Martin Luther King living in the year 2022, what kind of change would you bring to this world? Mm, let me see. Andrew Smolenko looks like a wise man, as wise as Martin. Would you take up this first question? If you were Martin Luther King living in the year 2022, what kind of change would you bring to this world? Well, oh, thank you very much, Madam Sable Sadiq Master. Alvin, what's an amazing question about Martin Luther King living in our age? You know, once I asked my son if he really liked his name. His name is Martin. He said, oh, well, that no, I just don't know any famous person who is that name. It was a few years ago. And then suddenly everybody starts talking about Mar Martin Luther King and his famous speech. And then some realized that his name was so popular in school and amongst his peers. So he really liked me as well. And that's something that planted idea into my mind that perhaps if Martin Luther King appeared in this age, then many more people would name their children Martin. That's for sure. I think one of the most incredible things that I've noticed if people like a politician, if people like a celebrity, then there will be more children named after them all around the world. So I would say, let's produce more Martins, more great speakers, inspirational speakers around the world. So please, Martin Luther King, come over here. My son likes you, so do I. Back to you, Madam Table Surfix Master. Thank you, thank you, Andrew. I just scrolled on very quickly. Uh, I just scrolled on my mobile phone very quickly and find, found five margins on my mobile phone. If he were alive today, maybe I will have 50 margins. Okay. And the next question, I would like to invite Rick Darling. There are a lot of injustices in this world. And our Toastmasters International is a Nonprofit organization with global presence. Do you think, is, is there anything Toastmasters can do to minimize injustices or to fight injustices in this world? What do you think, Rick? Good evening, fellow Toastmasters. There's no question, there is injustice in this world. The injustice comes in so many different forms that it's hard even to begin listing the types of injustice that actually occur on a daily basis. But that doesn't mean we can't have hope. Hope is something that we can have. And striving for getting rid of injustice, all of it, in any form, is something that we all can really move towards. It starts with a meeting similar to this, where we have people from all over the world connecting, finding one another, discovering that we're not different. We have the same hopes, the same dreams, the same wants. But we are, some of us, unfortunately, forced into places where we cannot even begin to reach for those dreams. But the human spirit has so much strength in it that the dream can be made real, if only in our mind, perhaps. But every time a mind reaches for the stars, reaches for what you want, that is killing injustice. So have hope. We can, as a Toastmasters organization, deliver that kind of hope. That is something all of us can do. Thank you, Madam Postman, Table Topics. Thank you, Rick. That's very inspiring. What we can do at Postmasters is to deliver hope. Coming up, shall I invite a guest, uh, Maggie? Hi, Maggie. 
During COVID-19, I believe that we long for the freedom of traveling. There are a lot of travel bans all over, across the world. So what's your opinion on travel ban? Do you think that we should lift all the travel bans and cohabit with COVID-19 or should we stick to, the, to it? How important do you think the travel of freedom and the freedom of travel is during COVID? Thank you. Thank you, Table Topic Toastmaster. Um, I think this question really linked back to question one and question two, because when two of the very experienced member talk about um, what would you do if you were Martin Luther, uh, Martin Luther King or what kind of injustice you try to fight for. I definitely think about my answer as well. Um, so let's talk about freedom first. Some people will say, I have my freedom to decide where I'm going. You can't just ban me. While some people will say, let's just listen to the government. Um, let's just try to protect the big picture. So based on lots of historical you, you know, learnings and also how people reacting to the pandemic, to the virus, I think we need to learn. We need to be very humble and just try to learn from the mother nature, then work out the proposal, then try to, you know, publish whatever the rules of procedure. So in the last past two years, I'm very happy whatever our local, um, local government was trying to do. I wasn't really against to travel ban, but I'm hoping, you know, because people is really reaching to the limit. And I'm pretty sure all these, you know, governors or the societies, they know what's going on. So in consider of the human nature, I'm thinking something will be changed. Also that based on people's, you know, um, responsibilities and um, their availability. So I'm, I'm pretty much support the last two years and I'm hoping we'll have embraced a new future. Because I actually canceled my two very important girls trip that was really, really looking forward for myself, for myself, but I'm hoping I can travel with my girlfriend again in the future. Thank you very much, back to you. Thank you, thank you, Maggie. And I also hope that every, everybody gets some sort of, or a certain degree of uh, freedom for traveling. Next, shall I also invite another guest, Simon? Yep, uh, so Simon, some people say life is unfair and it's not fair that life is unfair. What would you do when you feel that life is being unfair to you? What would right, you so do? The, yeah. yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so, so the question is, what would I do when I feel life is unfair? Okay, is it 30 seconds I get on this? Up to two minutes. Oh, up to two minutes, all oh, right, okay, sure. Okay, well, I think we can all relate to this, so it's just not my answer, but, you know, COVID, it's affected us all, so, you know, we've all been shut away from friends and family, and as the previous speaker said, you know, we're not allowed to travel around the world like we used to, and, and we can all say that that's unfair, but for me, um, what I like to do when I find life or a circumstance has been unfair to me, I like to look back at the past and look at people or, or uh, situations that have been really unfair to people in the past and evil to people in the past. Because I think even though we live in this modern world, we think, oh, you know, not being able to travel is, is, a, is a massive issue. But when we look back at, you know, what's happened in the past, slavery or you know, uh, genocide and and things like that. There have been situations that have been far worse for people in the past than what we're currently going through now. And even with all of this that's going on, you know, uh, mandates and restrictions, this is, I, I, although this might be obvious to everyone, it wasn't obvious to me, but it's like, as soon as we turn the computer off, we turn the radio off, we turn the TV off, we step out into nature, we go and buy a park and sit by some ducks. That's also a, a, a part of the world that 
you know, I haven't really been what you could say appreciating because nature is still for us. You know, we can still appreciate nature. It's still open to us. It's not rejecting us um, and it's still embracing us. So, you know, I, I find there's a lot more we can appreciate in life and we should always look back at um, uh, past injustices to be thankful for our own cir circumstances. I think that's where I'll conclude. Thanks, Simon. I like um, I like your opinion on on that. Um, I like your opinion on that. We should look back on the past. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah. So next, shall I invite Imtin and Mawson? I love your background picture. And oh, thank I you. wonder what would you do to motivate or to embed a sense of justice in your children so that they grow up to be a better person. Yeah, thank you very much uh, to the topic master for inviting me. Um, it's a very good question. And uh, I, and even uh, when I'm, I'm teaching my kids, I always teach them uh, about justices, and, uh, the importance of justice. Uh, I will definitely teach them in a different way. Uh, like for example when they are in the home then they have to do justice with their brothers and sisters and they have to to to, to uh, give a proper time to to, to their uh, parents to the to the to their work and to their uh, uh, to their um, brothers and sisters and when they are outside the home in the school they have to be uh, like for example uh, my Elder son was very kind guy, and sometimes and, and and he felt that uh, he somebody is being ignored because of his color, of his creed, of his of his any disability. He always tries to help him. So this is actually my also my teaching that always don't uh, don't follow the the, the the traditions, but always follow uh, the humans. The, the the humans are more important than the even the the rules and decorations. If you are if you if you are kind toward other other human beings, then you become a, you, you becoming a good person. So my always teaching to my 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 uh, siblings that they always uh, do justice in in anything they do. So over to over back to you, Errol. Thank you very much. Great, great. Encourage others to encourage children to do good for others. That's a great idea. So let me see who's next. What about a Carter, Lucas? Are you ready for a question? Some people say too much freedom leads to chaos. Do you agree with this? Some too much freedom leads to chaos. Do you agree with this? Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. And I don't have a quite a precise answer to that because yes, too much freedom in a particular context, in a particular thing could lead to either some good consequences that some may have had in mind, maybe negative consequences, which people did not have in mind. And that can go either way for a short amount of time or for an extended period of time. It's really hard to know. The way I see it is that if people are going to have freedom, there always has to be a certain level of responsibility in the way in which they wield that freedom because when we act, we do not act in isolation. Our actions do have consequences, not only for ourselves, but our immediate family, for extended family, for those around us in the community. So if COVID has told us any, taught us anything is that yes, our actions can have an impact on others. So we do need to be conscientious about what we do, how we act, and use the freedom that we do have as responsibly as possible. I think that this is something that is not an exact science. One could think about intensely about the consequences of having a certain level of freedom, but then when it goes, when it plays out, we may be surprised on what we find and how people react to that. Back to you, Madam Table Topics Master. Yeah, thank you, Lucas. So Lucas suggests that we should use freedom conscientiously. Mm, I agree with that. 
And moving forward, shall I, shall I invite our guest, Nazaya? Nazaya, are you there? Yeah. Oh, great, you're there. So let me see. I believe that freedom is the mother of innovation because only when we have abundant opportunities to experiment with new ideas, can we make new inventions? Do you agree that freedom is the mother of innovation? Do you agree that freedom is the mother of innovation? Um, I'm not gonna lie. Do you need to give me another question? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you want another question? Okay. Do you, can you tell us a type of freedom? that you have been fighting for? Maybe freedom of speech, freedom of traveling, freedom of expression. Just tell us any type of freedom that you have been fighting for or you were fighting for. Um, I would say freedom of expression because I do have a lot of trouble expressing myself to my mother because she doesn't understand where my point of view be coming from so it's really a struggle for me to express it and it's and it's always oh i'm being disrespectful or or i'm not understanding but in reality it's like i do understand but you're just not understanding me so yeah I'm sorry, guys. This is my first time. I'm a little nervous. I don't know what I'm doing. So, yeah. That's okay. I think that's really great, Nazaya. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, I have a lot of friends coming, up, uh, coming to me telling me that they have problems with freedom of expression because they can't express what they, re uh, the, what they really think or what they really want to their parents who are sometimes over, say, uh, overprotective. Okay, I think the time is up, right? Uh, you got time for one more, probably. One more? Yeah, okay. 8, 8.37. Uh, right. oh, okay. Uh, so why not give the last question to Graham? You know what the question was. Uh, do you agree that it, uh, freedom is the mother or the prerequisite for innovation? Madam Topics Master. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, the answer to this question is not as obvious as it might appear. From a liberal democratic perspective, and that reflects most of us here in this room, then yes, freedom is what we need to innovate. Freedom is what we need to grow. And freedom is what we need to develop. But I spent 40 years as a journalist, and the last 20 of those I have spent teaching journalism students. Here's an interesting observation that you may not have considered. Around 15% of my students come from countries where democracy, particularly liberal democracy, is not the norm. If I were to ask them this question, they may well give me the answer that I want. Yes, freedom makes us more innovative. But they may be honest and say, no, a restricted system, such as we have a guided system in Vietnam or in China, actually leads to innovation because we don't need to worry about the fripperies of freedom. We know that our state is going to support us as we push forward. Now, as a liberal Democrat, I don't understand that perspective. But as somebody who has to teach, I also understand that I can't necessarily disregard their perspective. So in answer to your question, it's not as easy as it would appear. I'd like to think that freedom is required for innovation, but I recognize that some of the greatest innovations of the 20th century, for example, came from totalitarian regimes. So where does that leave us? I don't know. Madam Topics Master. Thank you, Graham. That's a very insightful answer. I should go back and reflect on my perspective, my liberal democratic perspective.
back to Toastmaster Andrew. If you want to do one more, you could. Otherwise, we'll go forward. You want to do one more? Uh, let me see. David, maybe? Do you think, David, do you think go. you want to make a question? Hmm. Yeah. When we give our children too much freedom, sometimes they will forget about their responsibilities. How will you train your kids to balance their freedom and responsibilities? Oh, well, that would be lovely if my kids would listen to me about anything related to, well, freedom. I think they, I think they got a, a firm grip on freedom. They want more of it. They want to decide their own things. Responsibility? I don't know. I've been working on my son in terms of not only responsibility to the world, responsibility to the family, but you know, responsibility to himself, like finishing his work before the uh, semester is over, <laughs> rather than even if the professor is offering an extension that he can finish up a little bit after the semester is over and it'll still count. Well, but that that uh, that is uh, torpedoing his own vacation, his time off. Um, so understanding responsibility, maybe more to yourself than to anybody else, uh, is a diff difficult concept for children to grasp. And honestly, when I look at myself, when I look at the things that I procrastinate about, <laughs> maybe I could learn a little bit more of that too. Madam Table Topics Master. Thanks, David. You have good children. Here we have, I think, getting children to balance their freedom and responsibilities are, is kind of a pain in the neck. All right, our time is really up now. It's 8.37. Back to Andrew. Can we get a timer's report, please, on who, who qualified? Oh, I'm sorry, I think it's in the chat. Okay, thank you very much. Did a fantastic job. Very insightful questions made us all think a little bit more. At this point, we normally have recognition for new members. We have lots of guests, and just so that you know what rules are set out for this advanced club, Marianne Grady is vice president of membership. We ask that you come visit the club at least twice, that our criteria is one of two things. Either you have done six speeches or two levels in pathways, or are judged a proficient speaker because of your life's work Perhaps you're a teacher, perhaps you do something else and present a two minute speech like a table topics to the club and you're voted to come in or not to come in. And that's basically the sum of it. The other words that I have in the few minutes I have left is to remind everybody if they have completed a level two or a level three were in need of credits from those two pr levels to help the club reach all six educational levels in this year. So I just want you to think about it. If you have not uh, done a submission for those levels, please let me know. I'll help get you credit in this club. And if you're starting over in a new pathway, then as you hit levels two and three, the club could use it and we'll give you some preferential assignments to speaking slots. So I just wanted to mention that. Other than that, the last thing to mention is taking for the officers, taking a officer's TLI training anywhere in the globe and make sure that your name is listed for this club so that the club can get credit. We need a minimum of four, seven would be great. In our first round, we had six. So let's go for seven. Let me see from the officers, those that have already taken a TLI for their assigned role. One, two, three, four. So we have four, so we have to make sure that those places, if you send me a note to which TLI you went to so that I can make sure that TLI, uh, make sure that Toastmasters gives us credit 
for those appearances and we, it goes on the dashboard. That is all for my section and I now turn it over to a very fantastic speaker, achiever of great exciting things, Pamela Benjamin will be the general evaluator. Pamela Benjamin, take it away for the general evaluation portion where we all learn a little bit more from those that evaluated our speeches. Go ahead. Thank you, Andrew. I do so many exciting things. Now we're going to have the exciting portion of the general evaluation, the general evaluation. But before that, I'm going to have some help from other members of our club. Now, Nick gave a speech and we're the board is working on how how we can interject more energy and more information in a positive upbeat way so nick did that he's our trial person on this new kind of speech and his evaluator on that will be lou brown our president lou take it away uh, so sorry, Madam General Evaluator, but we were dispensing with a formal evaluation for this special. Okay, segment we're not we going were to. Doing. We're not going to do that. Okay, yeah, that's what a, I was. It's not a pathway speech, so yeah, no formal eval needed. Thank we you. We are not going to evaluate that, <laughs> but in lieu of Lou speaking, you can put comments in the chat to Nick about what you thought of his presentation on. Prezi. Our first speaker, let me change that around. Our first speaker was Tricia Smith, and her evaluator is Dr. Hall. Dr. Hall, can you please evaluate Tricia? Thank you, um, uh, Madam Evaluator. So, um, Tricia, you were passionate, and that was very, very evident. We felt that you knew what green and going green was all about. You had the entire backdrop and that conveyed a message. Your voice, the energy conveyed your message. You also started off super powerfully. You started off with a very bold statement. Don't be comfort driven, be cause driven. And then you went on to ask us a very personal question. Do you have a cause? You broke down what cause was and you told us why you're green and you gave us a lot of examples how to make green possible using everyday products, olive oil, lemon juice. So you gave us lots of examples and so you met the objective of your speech. So how could we make this actually a bit better? Well, I have a couple of suggestions for you. One of them is demonstrating props. When we're demonstrating props with a backdrop, you are out here. We want to use our body as the backdrop. We want to come forward to the camera because half of your props we're not able to see. So using our, back, our bodies when we have a virtual backdrop is one thing. Second thing is another objective of your speech was to communicate change. And mixed into the whole concept of communicating change is this idea of convincing us. Going green is a very polarizing topic, the idea of climate change, yes or no. So how do we go about communicating that effectively? I believe that you perhaps could have added a story, a personal story, where you talked about why you went green, where you use emotions linked in with facts, or if not you, perhaps someone else's story. You talked about plastic with, you know, B, uh, BPH, B, P, BPA. Uh, you can perhaps share a story about, I don't know, uh, reproduction or immunity or neurological reasons. You mentioned landfill and diapers. But this audience, I don't really believe uh, have young babies. So perhaps something that would tap into this audience uh, to make it possible, to give us a strong why we should go green. When you spoke to us, 
we knew this is something you lived and this is something you did. So you came across beyond authentic uh, delivering this, this topic. Um, a great subject matter for you. You're a perfect vehicle for this message. Thank you very, very much for sharing. Table to um, Madam, <laughs> I keep saying table topic Toastmasters. I forgot who, who I should hand it back to. General evaluator. Thank General you, Dr. Evaluator. Hall. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Our, next, our next evaluator will be Jim Barber. He is evaluating Angela Heath. Jim? Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. My fellow Toastmasters are most welcome guests, and especially, of course, Toastmaster Angela Heath. Angela, you're an experienced Toastmaster, so I'm just going to cut to the chase here. There are three aspects to your presentation that I'm going to evaluate, and I'll tell you up front, you were top notch in all three. As far as vocals go, your, your use of the pause is terrific. It causes you to have a very conversational style that enables you to have a good rapport with your audience. That just works so well. Visually, your lighting was fine. Your background, loved your background because although you have things in the background, they're off to the side and there's nothing directly behind you. And that works very well. I get tired of seeing potted plants growing out of people's heads and that sort of thing. You did that well. Your content was well-structured, well-delivered, well-written, everything top-notch. I do have one suggestion for you. It's not with your presentation. Your presentation, as I say, was great. It's actually with what you were talking about, which is the use of presentation software. Now, first, I loved what you did tonight. It was in line with what Nick did earlier. You made yourself the star of the presentation. Your slides did not overpower what you were doing and you did that very well and I think that is terrific. I do have a suggestion though. There was a lot of space that was wasted in your presentation. This is what we saw and you can see up top and at the bottom and also on either side of you there's really nothing happening so this is kind of quick and dirty but i would suggest using minicam to do something like that so that you're on screen but you're a little bit smaller it's a little we've tightened it up a little bit and consequently we can make the slide a little bit bigger this and now it allows us to see it a little bit better you stay the star of the presentation but the content allows us to actually connect with that a little bit. But this is just a small suggestion to a, what is a, whoop, got, the, got rid of that too fast, back to me. There we go. Um, this was a terrific presentation. I don't have any suggestions for improvement as far as your presentation goes. I love what you're doing with Minicam. Simply play with it a little bit to make, again, tighten it up a little bit so there's not quite so much wasted space. I think you can improve on you know, what I did uh, very quickly there. But that's my suggestion. This was a terrific presentation. I'm looking forward to seeing what you're going to do next time. Back to you, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you, Jim. Lou, can we have a timer's report on our evaluators? Yes, ma'am. We have Dr. Hall at two minutes, 58 seconds, and Jim Barber at two minutes, 53 seconds. Both of our evaluators qualified. Thank you. One of the things we were tweaking about the meeting agenda and format was if we have someone come in and give a five-minute speech about something that would encourage and bring enthusiasm more details on how to be better online to our members would that bring more value to our members so nick was our trial he was the first he was the first person who did it and what we did is we dispensed of the introduction of the minor roles now you might say that's a good thing you might want to hear each role but we're trialing this and i say kudos to the group for trying this and working it out i uh, Lou had sent me an, a message and I thought he wanted me to have an evaluation for Nick. It makes more sense not to have an evaluation, but I think it's a great idea if our members embrace it. So that first five minutes, instead of introducing the minor 
roles. But now at this point, I'm going to ask for the people who are helpers in the role in the meeting to give their report. And we will start with the ah counter, Lucas. All right, I'm going to share my screen. I think everybody can see it, but this is our handy Excel sheet where you can see your name. Let me just zoom in just a tad so you can make it a little bit clearer for everyone. But you'll see your name in column B if you had a speaking role. And then you'll see all the crutch words that we commonly use. That's column D through N. Nick, on your end, I just wanted to highlight so that there's no confusion and there's clarity. Now was used as, I would say, as a crutch word because it was used frequently in your transitions to the extent that I think it would count as a crutch word just more, something more unique. But continue to scroll down, and these are all the crutch words that we use, totaling to 69 total crutch words. And our most popular one appears to be the infamous ah. Back to you, general evaluator. The infamous, infamous AH word. Our next helper, is grammarian Graham Carnes. Graham, can you give us your report, please? Yes, I can, Madam General Evaluator. The use of the words of the evening, that is freedom and justice, were, we, they were used quite a bit, but that's largely because they were used in the table topics. I didn't hear individual participants using them outside of those questions. Part of my job as a grammarian is to look at the uses of the language good and bad. There were a couple of occasions where grammar was fractured, but given the polyglot nature of this club, that's not entirely to be unexpected. And I don't believe it was outside the bounds of what is acceptable. But I would suggest that we all try to bear in mind the niceties of language, that we use conjunctions, that we use all of the things that make the language flow smoothly rather than jump across rapids in rocks. Lose PowerPoint junkie, I thought was a nice phrase. Yeah, try not to be addicted. There were no particularly egregious errors that I saw tonight, but by the same token, there were no flights of fancy that drew my attention either. So a bit disappointing in that sense, but never mind, not disappointing that we didn't stuff up. Madam General Evaluator. Thank you, Graham. And for our chat monitor, Intamin. Yeah, thank you, General Director. For, uh, so I found that the, most of the people use the chat box very effectively. Like Teresha invited people to use the chat box to respond. And Andrew provided a very good information about the 98% water is being reclaimed in Israel. And also, also the guest also responded. Like Maggie also used the chat box effectively. Uh, so uh, everybody has used and and Luz also giving the information for the timing. So so everybody used the chat box very effectively. And uh, uh, so yeah, so that's my report. Over back to General Valvet. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Intamin. For my report on the meeting, I think it was fast paced. I think it was fun. I really like the table topic questions. Uh, uh, Erlen, Erlen really does a wonderful job with the language and with the questions. I think some of the questions really cause some of our advanced Toastmasters to scramble a little bit and really think about their questions. So there was a few flights of fancy as we were scrambling on how to answer the question about justice and freedom, how they go together. Two, abstract concepts that are very real in our lives. I thought it was a really great meeting in that regard. Our speakers, we had some great evaluators on our speakers, and I thought Nick brought it again with Prezi, challenging us to be more relevant and clear and trying new tools when we're doing presentations. So my evaluation of the meeting is really that we did really a great job. I would like, if we're going to keep this format, I would like the agenda to have a different word than speaker for that first person. So I was saying, I was saying that maybe we could call it the, you know, the five minute challenge or something like that so that we would designate so that 
General Lavalier would not be confused about the first speaker. So we had two speakers and we had someone who gave us a challenge. But that's my perspective after being a general evaluator. Now I would like to hand the meeting back over to our Toastmaster of the day. Is that right, Andy? I asked for the winners. David. David is the vote counter. Okay. There we go. Well, here we go. Yeah. Drum roll, Drum please. Roll. Yes. The speaker, Angela. You can unmute. You can clap. As table topic speaker is Graham, as it so often is. And our evaluator for the evening is Dr. Karen Hall. Thank you. Now I'd like to return the meeting back to our Toastmaster of the day, Andrew Byrne. Can't hear you, Andy. Can't hear you. I'm here. There he is. Uh, very often you try and do your best to remember of turning your mic off for etiquette while other people are speaking, and then you have to take that extra step and turn it back on, as opposed to leaving it on all the time. At this point, we've reached the end of our meeting. We will have some closing remarks by our president, Lou Brown. And as soon as that is over in the next four minutes, we will have our unofficial after time where we lock everybody down with commitments for next week. So take it, Lou Brown, president of online presenters. Thank you very much, Andy. Appreciate that. Excellent job uh, sticking on time with the agenda and getting all through this. I mean, it's 7.57, sorry, 8.57 right now, Chicago time, 8.57. And with this new format, it was a little uncertain whether or not we would kind of stick to the time frame in the way we had planned. And, you know, for the most part, we did. So excellent job, everyone. Let's see, are our guests still with us? Simon, I'm looking for Simon, are you there, my friend? There you are, okay, yep. and Maggie, there's Maggie and Naziah. At this point, we'd love to hear from our guests what you've gained from the meeting, what you thought about it, and especially, would you like to come back and join us again? You know, feel free, uh, to, or, or as comfortable as you are to share as much information as you like. Let's start with you, Maggie. Yes, um, thank you very much again for having me again. Um, I personally last year because of the COVID and the working from home, I brought myself into lots of um, international online clubs. I virtually been to um, Netherlands, Germany, which one is else? Sydney, so even though it's in the same country. And this is like the fourth, number four um, international virtual meeting for me. I feel like I really like the agenda and I like the time frame. It's not too long. I remember one of the meeting I attended that was like two and a half hour. It was really, really long. Um, and the tone I felt like this morning here is light and definitely everyone knows what you need to do. Everyone's so experienced, not too heavy. And um, I'll be happy to join um, as an online member, if possible, someone can approach me later. Most certainly. Thank you so much, Maggie, for sharing and for your interest in joining our club. That's wonderful. Our Vice President of Membership, Marianne Grady, will be reaching out to you shortly. Thank you again for attending. And, you know, two and a half hours in the Zoom meeting, there's got to be a medical term for what that can do to a person. Zoom bum or something like that, because I could not survive two and a half hours. That's pretty crazy. Very good. Let's move on to Simon. What did you gain from our meeting this evening, sir? Oh, I really gained a lot, actually. I learned a lot of new tricks on how to do presentations um, in terms of the software that you can have. So thanks, Nick, for that information. Um, and also, um, yeah, I've got some really good ideas from your other um, presenters as well on how to present things. So thanks all. But I'd like to come back. And um, when can I do a presentation? You can do one right away as soon as you pay your membership dues. Yeah. 
<laughs> that was, <laughs> but yet, no, I mean, as soon as you are ready, my friend, we will yeah. also hook you up with Mary and Grady, get you on board, get you, uh, yeah, pretty much on board with a mentor and things like that. And All we can right. put you right on the agenda. Well, that's wonderful, right. Simon. Awesome. Thank you again, my friend. Thank you for being here. Can, can I just ask, though, is it the same Certainly. time every week? Is it the same it time? It is. All oh, right. It is, yes. Uh, exactly. Yes, except if you've got to make allowances for daylight saving. Do you have daylight saving in New Zealand? Yes, we do. In that case, it'll change by two hours uh, because this club yep. meets based on daylight saving in Florida. Yeah. Uh, and so they will change and then you will change. Yes, yeah. so, got it. Uh, it's, what time uh, it's the is same it there? day part. Simon, what time is it there? It's 3 p.m. here, so it's the ideal time for me. 3 p.m. Oh, okay. 3 p.m. Yeah. So it sounds yeah. like the one hour swing in either direction wouldn't be an issue. No, I know not at all. There's also that additional window between when we change and when you change. So that creates like another challenge to the whole oh, keeping up with the time change thing. Well, as long as, have, as, uh, as long as the calendar is like in the international time zone, I, it just kicks in automatically on Outlook. So it doesn't really worry. I believe me. so. Yeah. yeah, that's the best way to deal yeah. with it, certainly. Okay, very good. Thank you. Last but certainly not least, our in my experience, youngest person to ever visit online presenters that I am aware of, Nazaya, please share with us what you thought of our meeting. I know you had some, uh, you had expressed some discomfort in some ways, but you know what? We, all of us here are learning. We are all friends. And in many ways, we are also like family. And we'd also love for you to feel that way too. What are your thoughts? Um... I did like the meeting. I mean, it was really interesting because I never really experienced something like this and it's very new to me, very new, very much big words, big words that I plan on learning and hoping that I will soon be at the same level you guys are at. And um, I will be attending again because I hope to learn from folks like you guys because I know you guys have a lot of experience a lot of stories, a lot of things to say, and I, and I will be a part of it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And I think someone had mentioned early on that, you know, wow, getting a start at 18 to work on your communication skills, your leadership skills, things like that. Oh, my goodness. You, are, you have such a huge head start on other people your age. So, And quite frankly, people 10 years older than you. So wonderful that you are interested in joining us. And you are more than welcome to join us as a guest as often as you like to continue to learn more what our club is about, how we operate and so forth. So feel free to be with us again uh, in the future. Thanks again. I will now officially close the meeting. As Andrew mentioned, feel free to stay on. We're just going to have him, uh, I guess, ask. And boy, I've been saying ah, a lot tonight. My apologies to our uh, counter. By the way, did we ever ask the watcher for feedback? I can't remember. Uh, anyway, I'm going to officially close the meeting, hand it over to Andy, who's going to ask for our roles, uh, folks to fill roles for next week. Meeting officially adjourned.